So as we begin to come to a close involving the tie-ins of Civil War issue number four, we transition to Cable and Deadpool issue number 31. Now, if you recall our discussion with Cable and Deadpool issue number 30, we had talked about how Cable and Deadpool had really kind of, uh, I guess maybe had the very early formations of being opposed to one another, about how Deadpool had chosen the side of the government. He had chosen the pro-registration side, and Cable was really kind of leading, uh, leaning towards anti-registration, but at this point had hadn't necessarily made his goals quite clear in the sense that we didn't know exactly where he stood. With Cable and Deadpool issue number 31, we get a more clear-cut instance of where Cable stands in terms of superhuman registration. In addition, we really kind of pick up with the end of Cable and Deadpool issue number 30, where we saw that Deadpool had confronted Captain America and his team. Now, as you'll notice with the uh, comic book panel here, Goliath is alive. And the whole reason for this is because, as we know, this comic takes place chronologically, for the most part, before the events of Goliath's death. But as we'll see, See, the comic really kind of covers three different time spectrums, and what I mean by that is the comic initially starts out before the death of Goliath. It continues throughout Goliath's death, and then it ends after the death of Goliath. So it really kind of covers uh, everything before, after, or before, during, and after the events of Civil War issue number four. And what we see is that Deadpool is confronting and fighting all of Captain America's uh, group in addition to Captain America, and for the most part, he's able to handle his own quite well. I mean, He's really kind of able to not necessarily go toe-to-toe -to -toe physically with uh, Hercules, but is able to outmaneuver him. The same thing goes for Goliath, and it's really kind of funny here because in classic Deadpool fashion, we really kind of see him continuing this element of what he considers to be an inner monologue, when in reality, he's speaking outwardly. In addition, he's really kind of, uh, I guess, maybe narrating his own actions here. And this is really what kind of makes Deadpool funny in these comics, is he really kind of sets the stage for himself and really kind kind of has a series of, of quick quips and one-liners. As the comic really kind of progresses and Deadpool continues to fight the uh, the team of Captain America, Captain America eventually brings a conflict to an end and he really kind of stops uh, Hercules from effectively pummeling Deadpool. And he tells Hercules that Deadpool's really just kind of doing what's expected of him and they really had always kind of known that at some point along the line, Deadpool was going to get involved in the Civil War event. Which side he was going to choose, they didn't really know. But Captain America really kind of indicates here that he always had kind of known that Deadpool would have chosen the pro-registration side most likely. But we see that Hercules' patience is really kind of wearing thin here and that he really doesn't enjoy the presence of uh, what he considers to be a jester like Deadpool. And then Captain America kind of asks the question, what should we do with him? From here, Cable appears. And Cable says it's fine if Hercules pummels Deadpool for a little while because Deadpool has a healing factor and that eventually he'll recover. From here we see that uh, Cable confronts Deadpool and really kind of acknowledges the fact that the two of them are on opposite sides. And he actually goes as far as to try to bribe Deadpool and tell Deadpool that he'll double whatever it is that he's being paid to, uh, to I guess, try to capture superheroes. Deadpool is a little uh, hesitant here. And then uh, Cable goes as far as to say that he'll give him a bigger badge than the one that he already has. And this is where Deadpool, again, has one of his funnier moments because he's really kind of torn here. The element or the idea of having a bigger badge is almost enough to turn him but not quite. He tries to fire some of his tranquilizers at Cable, but because of Gable's uh, gravimetric field, the uh, tranquilizers bounce off of him and they actually end up hitting Deadpool instead. From here, Deadpool falls unconscious and Captain America asks, you know, how long will he be out for? And Cable replies, not nearly long enough. And so they ask, what should we do with him? And Cable says, get as much duct tape as you can and use one roll of duct tape for his mouth. And this is really kind of a funny element when it really kind of pays homage to how often Deadpool talks. Now from here, we see that Deadpool's really just kind of trying to struggle to get out of his bonds. He's really kind of trying to, uh, trying to get, I guess maybe uh, execute his escape. And the more he fights the tighter the bonds become, the least likely it is that he's going to be able to escape. In addition, he acknowledges the fact that he has to go pee. And for the next few panels, this is really the only focus that he has, that he just really has to go to the bathroom, that he really has to go pee. And this is probably one of my favorite parts <laughs> because it's classic Deadpool. This is, this is classic Deadpool right here. This is simply just Deadpool struggling, duct taped to a chair, 
and he just really has to go pee. <laughs> I don't really know how else to say that. Uh, it's just it's one of my favorite parts when it comes to the uh, to the Deadpool comics. Um, but we see that uh, that Cable arrives, and um, Cable tells him the game has changed. That this is not really kind of a funny thing anymore. This is something that has to be taken a lot more seriously now. And he says that Goliath has been killed. Now, <clears throat> what's really kind of cool here is that Deadpool again really kind of acknowledges some of the events that had taken place before Civil War, despite the fact that Deadpool for the most part in, in the Cable and Deadpool comics is really kind of off on his own doing his own thing. And what we see is that, uh, of course, Thor tell, I'm sorry, uh, Cable tells Deadpool that um, Thor killed one of our guys, killed uh, Goliath. And Cable, or Deadpool says that Thor was dead. And Cable says someone forgot to tell him that, in addition to, uh, you know, the fact that, that, uh, Cable, or that Thor was supposed to be one of the good guys and someone didn't tell him that either. Uh, from here, we really kind of see that uh, Cable cuts Deadpool loose and says that they're basically going to be going on a mission. They're going to be transitioning. They're going to be going somewhere else. And Cable body slides the both of them to the White House. Now, from here, he's in the Oval Office, and he's trying to converse with the president, tells the president to keep his guards down, to not allow the Secret Service to shoot at him, because if they do, the bullets will bounce off of him due to his gravimetric field, and it may very well assassinate the president. From here, this is one of the most important parts of the comic. And the reason why is because this gives us a firm understanding of where Cable stands regarding the Civil War event, but it's also a little bit of humor. Deadpool is still having to pee. <laughs> he still has to use the bathroom. And so he eventually asks the president, where's the bathroom at? And the president says that it's uh, the third row down on the right. And so, of course, he has one of the Secret Service escort him there so that nothing, uh, Deadpool can't really do anything fishy. Um, from here, we see that Cable really is, is trying to plead with the president, trying to tell the president that while he is in support of superhuman registration, he is against the idea of the 50-state initiative. Now, if you recall uh, our discussion with the uh, Civil War frontline and the whole negative zone and whatnot, we had talked about how the 50-state initiative was an idea by Reed Richards and Iron Man and others to have a uh, government sanctioned superhero team in all 50 states. In addition, there would be a portal to the negative zone in all 50 states. And Cable's concern here is that this will really kind of lead to a totalitarian state where you will have a 50 state initiative that will start with the greatest intentions and then eventually it'll turn into a police state and that these superheroes will not exist to simply govern other superheroes. They won't exist to really kind of maintain law and order that they will become oppressive. And he goes as far as to say that Cable's uh, future, or Cable's life, Cable's past, is this present's future. And Cable really kind of comes with a warning, saying that if you continue down this road, if you continue what you're doing, the results are going to be something that will evolve into a real civil war. Because at this point, the civil war conflict, such as it is, is really kind of a conflict between superheroes. It's really not that major of an event involving society as a whole. For the most part, normal Normal humans haven't necessarily been impacted in the sense that they're able to continue going about their daily lives. They're able to continue their normal operations. They can go to work and they can talk to their kids and so on and so forth. And Cable says that if this continues, this will result in a civil war that will affect everyone. It will not simply just affect your average superhero. But the president doesn't want to hear this. And the reason why is because the president says he's not too concerned about something that's going to happen 50 years away, that his concern is the voters in November. And this is kind of a tip of the hat to, or I guess maybe kind of a, a criticism of sorts, to politicians in the sense that one of the biggest criticisms of modern day politicians is that they don't care about the future. They just care about getting reelected. What we see is that uh, the Secret Service agents begin to start shooting at Cable, and Cable is able to deflect all of their bullets. In addition, we see the National Guard arrives, and the National Guard begins attacking Cable. But Cable accesses something called the InfoNet, which is basically all the electronic transmissions that exist on the planet Earth. And he begins downloading the contents of the, uh, the Congressional Library into the minds of these soldiers. Now, it won't necessarily kill them. All it'll do is just simply keep their minds overwhelmed to the point that they are incapable of doing anything whatsoever. And this is when Cable again begins to really kind of, uh, I guess maybe 
become a little more harsh with the president where he says that this is not a joke. This is not some kind of a ruse or anything. This is a serious issue and that what you're doing here is only going to lead to a horrible future and that you have to stop now. And he says that, you know, that he'll be present, that cable will be there and that the president himself will be watching on as an elderly man when his successor is signing a treaty of surrender. And we would go as far as to presume that most likely what cable means is that this civil war that will take place will most likely kind of be a civil war between superheroes and humanity, which is really kind of uh, maybe a Days of Future Past-esque kind of concept. And, and if you guys remember our discussion about the Days of Future Past, we had talked about how the influence of the Days of Future Past would be seen in virtually every single crossover that, it, that would ever come after the Days of Future Past. And this is really kind of a homage to that. This is really kind of an instance where we kind of see Marvel pointing the finger and saying that the Days of Future Past timeline Line, it's not something that can't happen. It's not something that may never happen. It's entirely possible that it might. And so it's really kind of Marvel telling us that the possibility of a Days of Future Past kind of future is always there. Just because the events were thwarted by Kitty Pride doesn't mean that it could never happen. From here, we see that Deadpool arrives back after using the bathroom. And the president addresses Deadpool directly and asks Deadpool if he is a member of the uh, of the pro-registration group. And Deadpool answers yes. And so the president president says, your job now is to apprehend Cable, dead or alive. And this brings an end to Cable and Deadpool issue number 31.